Hello everybody and welcome back to Amity Blue. My name is Nazi. I am finally continuing the series of the thrift shop challenge or the thrift store challenge. You get items from your local thrift store. So I picked out a binder, papers, wallpaper, fabric, and you use them to make yourself a little journal. I chose a binder just because that is the easiest thing to get from a thrift store that is already made. So if you're interested in seeing where this idea came from and more about it, I will link the video up at the top. In the video, I shared how I decorated the spine and the cover. This was using a t-shirt and then the buttons I already had in my stash. This is perfect if you're on a budget but you still wanna be creative or if you just want to journal in a creative way, but you don't want to spend an arm and a leg doing so. Binders are honestly one of the easiest, cheapest, most affordable ways that you can start journaling or scrapbooking, and then you can alter it differently depending on your style. If you can make a bohemian binder, you can make um, a shabby chic. This one, I don't know, it's kind of vintage. I'm just filling it up with things that I've gotten from the thrift store, estate sales, garage sales, things that are very affordable and that are already in my stash. So don't go to Michael's, don't go to Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Avoid craft stores for this particular challenge and this project. I'm going to quickly show you all of the items that I'm going to be using to decorate the inside. The first thing you're going to want is obviously paper. Now, thankfully for me, I tend to have a lot of paper already. But the papers that I wanna walk you through first, as you can see, I'm using some vintage, really big um, vanilla. Did I say vanilla? <laughs> I meant manila, sorry. Manila, Nazi. we're not trying to bake some cookies. Manila, not vanilla. <laughs> These are some really big manila folders that I found from my thrift store. Um, I believe they are vintage because they came in this box. This is the box that they came in, so if you're trying to find manila folders like this, they're huge. This is the company, and hopefully you can find some. I'm not sure if they're vintage or not. Usually manila folders are really, really easy to find in the thrift stores. I'm going to be cutting them in half and using them as pages. They're already creamy to start out with. They're not like a stark white as opposed to my table. This is a white. This is like a cream, so I really like that. The whole thing is I'm going towards cream colors. Here's some ledger paper. It is white, as you can see. It's almost the same color as my table. It's still vintage, authentic ledger paper, so we're going to use that. And I found that from the thrift store as well. Pages from some old music books. If they're older, they're more cream colored. So I really, really love them. And these were from a music book that I got from the thrift store as well. And then these are just some book pages. Um, this one was from a cookbook, like an herb cookbook. And I loved this floral illustration. So I will definitely be using that. And then this was from a little vintage children's book. I think it was like um, a Peter Rabbit book. And I just loved all of the illustrations. So I will definitely be using this in my binder. And then obviously ledger paper. This ledger paper, I did not get it from a thrift store. I got it from a garage sale. But it's absolutely beautiful. It has that cream color to it. So I will definitely be using it in the binder. Something else that you can use is packaging. As you can see, this is a beautifully vintage um, McCall's pattern. I really don't want to rip this as I think the illustration is beautiful, but this would be a perfect pocket to include in the binder and obviously the best part. It comes with the sewing patterns and directions inside, which we can also use to decorate our binder as well. Because I'm starting to sew my own dresses, it kind of kills me to cut into this. I'm going to try to preserve it as much as I can and to just use the image and maybe save the pattern for later. This is some vintage packaging. I might not use the cover, but what I am going to use is what's on the inside. And I hope you can see this on camera. But it's basically transfer art, and it is from a vintage company because I don't think they sell these anymore. And if they do, let me know in the comments below so that I can buy more because I love this idea. But it's basically a pattern that you can transfer onto paper, and I'm assuming any other type of mixed media. It says you can use it on ribbon, basket, wood, foams, canvas, and burlap. 
which it sounds pretty awesome to me. And you basically just peel off the section that you want. And with a coin or something, you can just rub it and it will transfer. So it's kind of like a rub-on, but vintage. And it looks, I'm not sure if you can see, but it looks like a cross-stitch pattern. And then I have this. I found this from the thrift store. It's some cross-stitch fabric that I actually took out because I love the little packaging. I thought I could mimic this and cover it up with some pretty paper. And as you can see, it was only 25 cents from the thrift store. So we've got ourselves a pretty easy pocket that all we have to do is cover up and decorate. So. I'm going to be using that as well. Obviously, I can't create anything if I don't put wallpaper in it. And some of these I did get from the thrift store. For example, I got this one from the thrift store, which is just beautiful. Um, I got... I think this one, I got this one from the thrift store, which is, um, it's actually textured, but I love just how it feels and it's perfect for writing on top of. Um, and I got this one from the thrift store as well, which is really pretty floral. The rest of them I got from estate sales. Um, I've got them from online. I've um, gotten them from antique stores. So it's really a hit or miss. Well, needless to say, wallpaper is a little bit more on the expensive side, depending on what type of wallpaper you're getting. But you can always buy wallpaper, sample packs, or just little scraps so that you can get a plethora of different designs included into, into your journal. But definitely recommend using wallpaper as it's just like scrapbook paper, a beautiful design and its texture. Just make sure you stay away from wallpaper that has a paste to it because it tends to be very difficult to glue it on and it tends to wear out your needles if you're sewing it onto your paper. Ah, we've got a straggler. <laughs> oh, wallpaper scraps. Make sure you don't forget your wallpaper scraps as well. <laughs> and talking about scraps, this brings me to the next category, which is using the scrap that you already have. Now, luckily for me, I have a huge collection of paper, vintage papers, ephemera, because I've been, you know, collecting items to use in my journals for, I think, two years now. But if you are new to journaling, if you have, if you're new to creating your stash of papers, definitely go to thrift stores, get vintage children's books, vintage book pages, as they make the best collage backgrounds. Um, if you have some really pretty scrapbook paper that you want to use, go ahead and use that. Um, cards, like bits of cards that you find. I love reutilizing packaging. This was some packaging that I got from some masking tape stickers. Um, things that I've also gotten in Happy Mail. I believe this was from some Happy Mail that I received. Um, I have little bits and pieces from magazines, from books that I like. Scrapbook paper. This was some packaging. Um, this was some postcards that I got from a thrift store. Um, little bits of paper. If you don't have pretty scrapbook paper or wallpaper, print paper out from online. Go to Pinterest, go to Google, and print out some paper that is free for you to use and decorate in your journal. Um, this actually is from, as you can see, it's from this vintage children's book. But I basically collaged lots of little papers. I think this was about a year ago. I was just bored. <laughs> And I did this little collage of different types of papers, so I saved it because I knew I wanted to use it in something, and now I have a reason to use it. And then on my plate, as you all know, I love to keep my little bits and pieces on a plate. I have little postcards, um, craft paper, wallpaper scraps. This was a plain card for, that I got from a thrift store. Um, these are actually some of my printables that you can get from my Etsy shop. Um, old packaging, like vintage packaging. These are some button cards, vintage recipe cards, like random scraps of paper, like little fonts from magazines. Just basically, you can see it's just a different amount of things that I like and that go together. And of course, um, I cannot be an Amity Bloom journal if there's not some type of textile or fabric in it. These are just some little bits and bobs that I have pulled aside. Wait! This isn't fabric, these are buttons. <laughs> this was, I think I explained this in the previous video, but um, these are some vintage little buttons that I fell in love with. I love them, they're from a little scrap. 
So that actually goes on my little plate right there. But the rest of this is fabric and textiles. Um, this is actually a really funny story. I purchased a coin purse. It's kind of like a coin purse, like a coin wallet. But as you can see, it was made as like a quilt. It was like quilted. And it has some interfacing and some backing. And so I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to be using the fabric that's on top because I fell in love with it. So you can use things such as wallets, bags, purses, coin purses. If they're a fabric texture and you can easily rip them apart, you can use them in your journal. It's just because, you know, just because it's a purse doesn't mean you can utilize the fabric that they covered it up with. So definitely go into your thrift store next time with a different set in mind that you can utilize anything that is in there. Everything can be given a double purpose. Everything can be used in a different way. This is actually a little piece of a shirt that I had when I was little. It has some little buttons on it, so I thought this was really special to include it in my binder. It has some sentimental value. That's another idea. If you're growing out of your clothes, if your clothes um, get dirty, if they have holes, if they have rips, you can cut them and use them to decorate your journal with. Um, and not only is it really cute, but it's very sentimental as well. And then on this little piece, I hope that you can see it, some really beautiful embroidery, just really gorgeous textiles. This is a beautiful sample of some really pretty pink crepe that I bought to make a dress out of. And I think it would be so, so, so fun to include a little sample of this in my binder to kind of document my dress making process. <laughs> So this is a little piece that I saved. Some really beautiful lace that I had saved in my stash. And then this is really cool. As you can see the numbers, it says 1539. And um, this is actually printed on some burlap. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I completely forgot where I got this from. I think it was from an old embroidery piece that I got from an, I think an antique store or an estate sale, but I loved it and I thought it was kind of cool. So I'm going to be including that. And then this is a textile from the same embroidery piece. And this is a little fabric pocket that I made. I'm hoping that I will be able to punch holes through it. These are just some of the textiles that I'm going to be using. Obviously, I will be including more as I find more along the way. But that's basically it to what I'm going to be using on the inside to start decorating it. Like I said, this is going to be a series and there are going to be various videos until the entire little binder is full to the brim and then I will do a final flip through at the end. So now that you know what I'm going to be using for this binder, it's time to start decorating the inside. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to take my um, folders and I want to cut them in half so that I can include them in the binder. So I think these are a little bit too big. Let's take our binder just to see how much we need. So yeah, it's about half of it. I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to perfectly measure. Um, this is just for fun and whoa, this never happens. It's absolutely perfect. So yippee That makes me excited. So we've got that and then all I have to do now is go through the middle And cut it into separate pieces. We're doing this because each piece each separate piece is going to be a page in a binder. Make sure you don't get any like paper fuzzies stuck in the crease because that tends to rip your paper. It kind of tugs at your paper. Trust me, the worst thing that you want is ripping your paper, especially if it's a vintage piece because you can't you can't get that back. And I'm not drinking tea, I'm actually drinking water. So <laughs> And you can see the manila folders magically turned into pages. As you can see here, I decided to go ahead and fold all of my book pages and basically background pages in half. I'm going to go ahead and hole punch them, cut them in the middle, and put them in the binder. But before I do that, I want to show you a really easy way to basically hole punch your paper so that they're all the same. You want to take your template, which is this one, and I just want to mark where I want my hole punch to go. You just simply follow where the ring line is. So that's about perfect. Take your hole puncher, if you have just a single hole puncher like I do, and you want to hole punch it right in the middle. 
step one very important thing is that you want to make sure you leave about the same space from the edge of the paper to your hole punch all you want to do is you want to test it out it fits perfectly so now that you know this is the perfect measurement and size to go about hole punching the rest of your pages so to hole punch the rest of your pages for example we're going to take this piece of paper from a children's book we're going to place our template right on top of that with your pencil, you just kind of want to trace out a circle and take the other one. Perfect. And you have your paper hole punched. And as you can see, it opens up like this. So once you have your holes punched, you want to open up your page and you just want to cut it right in the middle. Just like that. And this way, all of your holes will match perfectly and you won't have to fuss around with pages that are a little bit too big or a little bit too small, or maybe for one page you hole punched the middle hole right here and then for the next one you placed it all the way up here. So this just gives you a really easy and consistent way of hole punching all of your pages if you don't have a reinforced like three hole puncher. I'm going to continue to do that to all of my pages and I'm going to be right back. So I went ahead and put my pages into my binder. And as you can see, I had to cut off about half an inch of the margin on the outside, just because that when you go ahead and you close your binder, the pages that are in the back tend to kind of push forward and you tend to have some overhang if you cut them exactly to the border of your binder. So it's very important to make sure you take that into account prior to decorating your pages. Make sure that you know that the pages will extend a little bit more in the corner and that can cause to have a little bit of excess paper showing. So what I'm going to be doing now is I want to make sure that I cover up the front page and the back page. I want to make sure I cover them up and I decorate them. I have this wallpaper which is beautiful. It's some really pretty florals. This was included in my bloom packs, my wallpaper bloom packs. And I'd love to decorate both the front cover and the back cover with this wallpaper. So I'm going to go ahead, cut it to size, and glue it onto my binder. So I have both of my wallpapers. I think I'm going to put this one on the front just because if you can see we have a little bit that is not covered up with wallpaper. And that is more than okay because I want to add two different types of wallpaper to the front page. I have this little wallpaper strip which I think looks so cute and it would be the perfect little border to add down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this to the page. Here I have E6000 glue and this is my first time trying this glue out as I'm really intrigued to finding out um, if this glue is really as powerful as people say it is. All right. That actually feels as if it's very, very strong. I think this adhesive really does work. And then I just add my little border right down there. And I trim that right along there. All right, so let's go to the back and do this these pieces. So I'm just going to take the the glue all right so I'm just going to place my wallpaper right in the middle just like so this is really really pretty I'm really really enjoying how this is looking I think it looks really cute I just wanted something that makes me happy and makes me smile every time I see it. So really love how this looks and it kind of goes with the color scheme of the yellow and the blue. I really like that. All right, so for the first page, let's start decorating it, shall we? So let me put my binder aside while I start decorating the first page. So I have this music paper, which I know I wanna use. I might put that down there. And then I have some of this paper here, which I will probably put on this side. I have some of this pink paper, which is actually really cute. <laughs> it looks really, really cute. And 
I think I'd like to have that as like a background paper so that I can journal on top of there. I like how that's looking and then we need something of color in that corner. Let's see here, do I have any pretty paper? I have some pretty wallpaper. I have some of this, which actually, that actually looks really pretty. This actually looks pretty stinking cute. So I think this is what I'm going to do. Perfect. Yay! Oh, that is so cute. I love how that looks. So that is the base to our collage page. So I have glued all of the papers to my base. And now I have these two little scraps that I picked up from my stash. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them right at the very top. So I'm going to grab this piece of paper. And you can obviously stitch it if you'd want. And I am going to probably at the end go through and stitch um, stitch some of the pieces of paper that I have glued on. But I want to stick to the simplicity of this because the whole idea is to utilize items from the thrift store, things that you have lying around at your home already. I don't want it to be expensive, so I want to show you that you can still decorate and produce really cute things for your journal without having, you know, to have a sewing machine. Um, if you do have a sewing machine, of course, you can definitely stitch around the border, stitch right here, which is probably what I'm going to do just because I love stitching and I love the look that it gives on paper. All we have to do is turn it over and trim off the excess. Oh, that looks so cute. Do you see the little pieces that we took off? This looks so adorable. I love how it's looking. So I think we are done with the first page. I don't want to decorate it too much because I obviously then want to go in and add some of my poetry and perhaps add some images like some children's book images or some floral images. And then I will probably film the next page for the next video. So I'm very happy with how this page looks like. Very, very simple. I hope that you guys enjoyed this first part of the series. Definitely stay tuned as I will be posting the rest of the series throughout this month. If you're enjoying the series so far, definitely give it a thumbs up. So I truly hope that you guys enjoyed taking a peek at all of the different items, the papers, the ephemera that I'm going to be using to decorate my altered vintage binder. I truly hope that this inspires you to go to your nearest thrift store, pick out a couple items that you'd love to use for this thrift store challenge. The rest of the series will be posted throughout this month. So I'm so excited to finally share the finished product with you all. So thank you so much once again for watching. I hope that this has inspired you in some way. And until next time, I hope that you guys have an amazing day filled with peace and love. Bye-bye.